Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jessica Dalzell, and I'm popping on to let you know that we will be starting our presentation in approximately one minute. Hello and good afternoon and welcome to our 2024 grant administration meeting. My name is Jessica Dalzell and I'm part of the Recycling and Sustainability Unit here at Ohio EPA. Before we get started, I'm going to go over a few items to help you participate and engage during this presentation. Uh, we'll go ahead on to the next, thanks Mike. On this slide, you will see an example screenshot of your attendee interface. You should see something that looks like this on your computer desktop specifically on the right hand side of your screen. If you're having sound issues or if your slides stop advancing, please try refreshing your browser. If that does not work, try logging off and logging back in. If you continue to have issues, please let us know by clicking on the question mark icon on the attendee interface and one of our behind the scenes team members will try to assist you. Please feel free to also submit any questions you might have to the presenters by clicking on the question mark. You may send your questions in at any time during the presentation. We will try our best to answer your questions as they come in, uh, but we will hold time for Q&A at the end of the presentation as well. But if we do not get a chance to answer your question, we will reach out to you via email after today's presentation. You can also click on the document icon to view included handouts, which for today are a PDF file of the PowerPoint slides and the grant user manual. Lastly, I want to add that this webinar is being recorded and you will receive a link to the recording and a follow up email so you can feel free to share those within your organization as needed. I will now turn the mic over to Marie Barnett to walk us through the agenda and get us started. Thank you, Jessica. Good afternoon, everyone. As Jessica mentioned, I am Marie Barnett, the grants administrator for the Recycle Ohio grant program. First, I'd like to congratulate your organization on behalf of Director Ann Vogel on your grant award and thank you for joining us today as we go over the mechanics of the grant program. Today we will go over a breakdown of the grant awards, the grant timeline, how the grant works, the Enhanced Assistance Program, the usage of the Recycle Ohio logo, and walk you through the online grant closeout report. Then, if time allows, we will end with a Q&A session. But before we get started, we'd like to take a quick poll. Is this your first Recycle Ohio grant? Please select yes or no. Thanks, Marie, and I will go ahead and launch that for everyone. You should now see that on your screen. We'll give the audience a minute or so to answer, and then I will share our results. Great, we have about 90% of our audience reporting, so I'll give it about 10 more seconds and then we'll close this poll. All right, Marie, I will go ahead and share these results with you. All right, you should be able to see that now. Wow, it looks like we have quite a few brand new people. It looks pretty even. It's a little bit higher for the new folks, but welcome. Thank you, Jessica.
We would like to take we would like to welcome everybody that's here today, whether you are new or if you're a returning grantee. With that said, it's a pleasure to serve all of you, and we are happy that you could join us today. To give you a snapshot of the 2024 grant cycle, this slide reflects a list of the number of requested grant applicants we received. As displayed here, we received a total of 177 projects requesting more than $9.9 .9 million. We received 80 community and litter grants, 62 source reduction, seven academic institutions, 21 market development, and seven scrap tire. This slide indicates the number of grants we were able to award, funding 77 projects out of the 80 in the community, community litter category, seven of seven out of the academic institution, 12 out of the 21 market development, and four out of the seven scrap tire grants, and 59 out of the 62 resource reduction categories. This resulting in an award just under $7.6 million, which is roughly 89.8% .8 of the applicants received. If you were awarded a community litter grant, academic institution, or resource reduction, which is the water bottle refilling station grant, you have one year to complete your project. These projects have a start date of April 1st, 2024, and run through March 30th of 2025. If you were awarded a market development grant or scrap tire grant, these grants generally require a government sponsor. You have a two-year grant timeline, and like the previous category, have a start date of April 1st, 2024. But unlike the previous category, run through March 30th, 2026. How it all works. If you are a recipient of a community litter, academic institution, or a scrap tire grant that did not require a government sponsor, you will receive an upfront initial payment of 50% and the remaining funds at the completion of the project. Once the final closeout report is submitted electronically and a compliance check has been approved, the remaining funds will be, will be released to the grantee and once again has 12 month period for project completion. If you received funding for a, a, a resource reduction grant, also referred to as the water bottle refilling station grant, for the purchase of water bottle refilling station equipment, you will receive an initial payment of 100% of the award and are required to complete the online closeout reporting information to successfully close your project. If you are an Ohio business, that received a market development or scrap tire award, which required a government sponsor, you will receive 100% of the payment once the project is complete. The grant payment, which will be forwarded to the government sponsor at the completion of the grant. Once EPA has received the electronic grant closeout report and a final compliance check is complete, the payment will be sent to the sponsor. This system kind of works a lot like a rebate. The cooperating enterprise, which is the business, makes the purchase up front. Once the project is complete, reports the expenditures in the closeout final report, electronic documentation, and if no compliance issues are found, the funds are released. This grant requires a 100% match from the cooperating enterprise, again, the business, and has a 24 month period for project completion. Regardless if your project is a one-year or two-year project, you can close out your grant at any time during your project time period. Again, matching funds for community and litter academic institutions is 25%. Market development and scrap tire awards require 100% match, and the resource reduction grants, which are awards for the purchase of water bottle refilling station equipment, has a 0% match. Once awarded, no additional grant funding will be bestowed. You must operate from the current and approved budget submitted on the original application. If any changes do occur, please reach out to us before making these changes so we can pre-approve any budget modifications. Failure to do so can result in an ineligible activity. Remember, all budget modifications require EPA approval. 
Again, all projects have a start date of April 20 of April 1st, 2024 and end June 30th of 2025 and 2026 respectfully with final closeout reporting due May 15th, 2025 and 2026. If you are unsure, take a look at your grant contract or reach out to myself or any RSU staff member and we can assist you. As a reminder for all grants, financial match must be cash or credit. Using in-kind and funds from another grant program is prohibited. Please note grant funds are not available until April 1st. This means do not purchase anything before this date or the expense will be ineligible for reimbursement. All applicants must have, must follow State of Ohio rules and regulations. Like all state funding, non-compliance will jeopardize the project. Again, once awarded, there are no timeline extensions or additional grant funding. Before getting started with your grant, we recommend reviewing the grant manual, which was previously forwarded in an email and is also included in today's handouts. The manual contains information on how to keep track of your funds, audits, contracts, subcontracts, and cooperating enterprises subcontracts, advertising policy, site visits, the enhanced assistance program, and the electronic online closeout reporting instructions. The manual was also referenced throughout the grant agreement. Next up, we have the agreement terms. For your grant agreement upon the termination of your grant contract, and for a period of three years following termination, the agency may require repayment of any funds dispersed up to the full amount that have been dis distributed upon a finding by the director that the grantee or the cooperating enterprise is not in substantial compliance with environmental laws, rules, or has become a subject to a formal enforcement action by Ohio EPA or the Ohio Attorney General's Office. If your grant included a cooperating enterprise, both parties were, signat were, signat were signatories on the contract and are obligated to all provisions. If you are purchasing equipment, grantees are required to keep records for each piece of equipment costing more than $300. For three years from the date the grantee is the recipient of any grant funded equipment, you can neither sell, transfer, or convert said equipment without written approval from Ohio EPA. If this is something that happens in the first year of the grant award, the grantee is required to repay Ohio EPA 90% of the grant funds awarded, 70% in the second year, and 50% in the third year. After the third year, equipment purchased with grant funding may be disposed of consistent with local guidelines, as well as sold or transferred without written approval from Ohio EPA. So let's take another poll, which is true, which is true about a budget modification. If it's a slight change, it doesn't need approved by Ohio EPA. If it's a major change, it doesn't need approved by Ohio EPA. Or lastly, all budget modifications must be approved by Ohio EPA. All right, Marie, I was answering a question and have failed you on my duties. I will go ahead and open up this poll for you all. And if you could go ahead and take a moment to answer, please.
All right, we have most of our answers in. I'll give it a couple more seconds and then I will get this closed out. All righty, Marie, here are your results. Thanks, Jess. Well, if you chose all budget modifications must be pre-approved by Ohio EPA, you were correct. This concludes my portion of today's Recycle Ohio Grant Award presentation. Next, I would like to introduce my friend and colleague, Travis Clark. As promised, he is going to discuss the Enhanced Assistance Program and Goals, introduce district office CAP staffers and how they can assist you, and lastly, provide a step-by-step -step tutorial of the online closeout process. Take it away, Travis. All right, thank you, Marie. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Like you said, my name is Travis. Um, and so I'm gonna cover the second half of our presentation today. But first, we're gonna go over kind of our assistance goals. I have, oh, there we go. Um, so this only impacts a few of our projects, so this isn't going to impact everybody. This is not something you're going to need to worry about enrolling in, filling out extra paperwork. This is something that we handle on our end. Um, but the main focus for this is on environmental compliance assistance and successful grant implementation. We want to make sure every grant project can be as successful as it can be. Um, and that's kind of the point of this. So this is a partnership with the Environmental Assistant Unit at Ohio EPA, which is the other half of OCAP, which is our Office of Compliance Assistance and Pollution Prevention, which um, our group that does this grant program is also part of. Um, and we're all within the non-regulatory and confidential arm of the agency. Um, so once again, our main goal is environmental compliance. Um, if under this that you would require a site visit, it will be coordinated with you. Not going to be any surprises. We're not going to show up without letting you know. Um, this is also in effect for three years after your grant cycle ends, not when you close out. So, for example, using our two year 2024 grant projects, the grant cycle will end March 30th, 2026. That means if you're under the enhanced assistance, you this would be valid through March of 2029. Um, here's a list of the five districts grouped by county uh, from who from OCAP represents which districts. Um, we did just have our central district office person accept a new position this week. So if you are in those counties and um, need some assistance, please just reach out to the recycling team and we will get you in touch with someone from the EAU staff. Um, also, as a reminder, this PowerPoint is included as an attachment in GoToWebinar. So please add it to your records in case you need to reach out um, to your OCAP representative. You can get their contact information from there. Or like we've stressed before, you can always reach out to the recycling team and we can put you in touch or get you information if you need it. Um, so it's kind of a quick broad view of that program. Um, so next is the recycling logo and acknowledgement. So as part of your grant agreement, this logo must be used on all grant funded equipment and printed items such as signage, stickers, and advertising. We ask that you use language, um, the funded or partially funded by the Ohio Environmental Protection Agency um, as in conjunction with that logo. Um, on the right here on this slide are examples of the full color and the black and white versions of the logo. Um, but we do ask that you do reach out for the high quality. Um, we do, sorry, if you reach out, we do have different versions different dimensions, high quality, different file types of these images. Um, so please reach out to our colleague, Chris Brown, in our communications department, and he will assist you. Um, so we do know in the past working grantees, sometimes they need it as a, a .png or different kind of file sizes, depending on what kind of vendor you're using, your advertisements, wherever you may be developing. Um, so Chris will be able to kind of provide you those different types. Um, and we also have like, the example here is our horizontal, versions of logos, we do also have vertical versions. Um, so Chris would be able to help you with whatever your needs are for the logo and acknowledgement. Um, so next is kind of the big piece is the online grant closeout process. So kind of what is that? The grant closeout is a process of submitting your final reports, invoices, and other documentations to Ohio EPA. 
This is how you finalize your grant project and close your books with us. This is required and you will not receive any of your remaining funds until this is submitted and approved. Um, the closeout process is online, just like the grant application was. And very similarly, it's submitted through the Ohio EPA Resource Hub. So in the closeout, you'll submit your budget table, your forms, and all the, um, and for those grants with the government sponsor, your sponsor checklist. You also fill out data tables and narrative questions about the success of your project. We love to hear your stories. We love to hear about all the great things you do. And this is your way to kind of tell us about all the great things you were able to accomplish. And then finally, you will include your invoices, any other proofs of payment showing that the grant funds were spent. Um, once submitted, we review your closeout at Ohio EPA. Once are reviewed and approved, any remaining grant funds that are warranted are then distributed to your organization. Um, so reminder, the grant cycle ends on March 30th, but you will have until May 15th to submit your closeout. So for all of our one-year grants, which would be our community and litter, academic, and source reduction, aka water bottles, your closeout will be due on or before May 15th, 2025. For our two-year grant projects, which is our market development and scrap tire, your closeout is due on or before May 15th, 2026. Um, you can close out anytime once your project is done. So for example, if you finish your project in November, have all your documentation results, go ahead and close out. You don't need to wait these those remaining months. You don't need to wait till May 15th. Um, we do recommend that once your project's done, go ahead and close out, get your money sooner, get um, just get it finalized and it's one less thing you have to worry about. For our projects with our government sponsor, the Cooperate Enterprise, also known as the business, is the one who fills out the closeout. There's also a checklist in the closeout um, for sponsors to assist you with this process. And then just as another reminder, the government sponsored projects do not receive any grant funds up front. Um, so your funds will not be distributed until after the closeout is complete and approved. So can I say that one more time? So all of ours that have government sponsors, none of your money has been released. So all of your funds will be released after a successful submitted closeout that is approved and authorized. And those funds will be given to your sponsor um, and then they will turn around and um, disperse those out to you. Um, so how do you access the closeout portal? Just like with the application, you will go to our agency website, epa.ohio.gov, so epa.ohio.gov. Um, just like before with the application, we recommend that you use Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, or Microsoft Edge. Um, please do not use Internet Explorer because sometimes it does not always work correctly in that browser. Um, once you are on the Ohio EPA agency website, scroll to the bottom of the web page and you'll find a blue banner at the bottom and you'll click there for our resource hub. Um, so you click the go now button. Um, so once on this page, you will go into the upper right corner, click the log in or sign up button. By default, the closeout is assigned to the account that submitted the grant application. So whoever is wanting to fill out your application um, in the fall, that's the person who the closeout is assigned to. If that person has changed, please reach out to the recycling team and we will update it. Um, they can only be assigned to one person at a time. So if it has changed, we do need to change that to give you access. Um, once you're logged into your account, go back to the upper right and click on your account name. Um, as shown here, this will give you a popular drop-down menu and you'll want to select the first option, My Ohio EPA Resource Hub Submittals. This will take you to your account page, which lists any grants and any other submittals linked to your account. Under the Submit a Report to Ohio EPA, select the grant you want to close out. If you do not see any closeouts listed, this means the grant is not assigned to your account. So once again, if you do not see it, please reach out to us. We want to make sure that it gets assigned to the right person. Um, so if you see this account there for you, to start the process, you will click on the Work on Closeout close out Report button on the middle right. Um, so this sometimes trips folks up. You do not want to click under the subject. You do not want to click the title of your application. That will just give you um, access to the application you submitted. To do the closeout, you want to click on that third column under the action of the Work on Closeout Report. Um, this launches the Closeout Portal, and you should see this. Um, see the screen like this right here. Um, 
So just follow the instructions, fill out the closeout with as much information as you can, just like you did during the application. On the data tables, um, sometimes folks come up. Um, if your project, just try to give us your best estimates for data. We know sometimes um, it's early in the process. We just ask you just kind of give us your best educated estimates. Um, this screen lists the upcoming narrative questions you'll be asked to fill out. So this is kind of new for this year, just like the application. Uh, this is to help you prepare and gather any sort of necessary information you'll need for the closeout. If you need to leave the application, hitting the next button will save your process. Um, and then you can log back in later and resume where you left off. So if you do get to these narrative questions and realize you need to do some more research or talk to other people in your organization or do some more data collecting, that's fine. Just hit next, it'll save your progress. Um, then you can leave the application then come back hours later, days later, and then resume filling out. And you would just get back to it the same way you access it. So you log into your account, go back to your submittals, and then click on work on close out. It'll take you back to where you left off. Uh, at the end, uh, after you fill out all the narratives and data tables, is the attachment screen. This is where you'll upload your budget tables, receipts, invoices, proofs of payment, supporting documentation, equipment lists, project photos, and any other related items and documentations for your project. Each upload will ask you to certify that what you have included is required. So many projects do have required attachments, like the budget, like um, in certain invoices for equipment. We just need to make sure that you certify that you included those required attachments. Um, and then please include photos that show up your projects. Um, photos a lot of times get uploaded under the additional documents. Those aren't a requirement, but something we do highly, highly encourage. We love seeing the great work you're doing and those get captured really well in photos. Um, and like I said, just upload those under that additional attachment option. So once everything is attached, um, you certify everything is included, all that's left is for you to sign and submit. And then you just like with the application, just go through certify that you have everything there, click assign it, submit it, and that's all you do. Um, also with the attachments, um, we have put together a custom Excel budget table for each grant. This will help you record and track your expenditures, you should have received this along with your grant manual. Um, please let us know if you did not, and we will get one to you. Um, so we got time for one final poll. See how everyone's paying attention. So how do you submit your closeout report? Is it, do you um, send a text message? Do you mail it in? Do you hand deliver it to us at Ohio EPA? Do you submit it online through the resource hub or do you email it to the recycling team? Thanks, Travis. I will go ahead and launch that poll. Give everybody a moment to answer. All right, and I will get this closed out and shared to you, Travis. It looks like you didn't trick anybody. <laughs> All right, looks like everyone was wide awake, paying attention. Um, that is correct, that it is online through our Ohio EPA resource hub. Um, so great, everyone, everyone got that right. Love to see that. So finally, we just wanted to highlight the contact information for the recycling and sustainability team. Um, we've said several dozen times that reach out to our team um, with questions or concerns or anything like that. This is our team. Um, so yeah, so questions, concerns, anything like that, please feel free to reach out to Marie, myself, um, the two presenters today, or anyone else on our team, and anyone would be happy to assist you. Um, like I mentioned before, this. Um, PowerPoint is included as a handout, so if you haven't already, please download that. That way you have access to all this information, but also our contact information if you would need to reach out to us during the grant cycle, whether it be in the next year or two as you work and implement your project. 
Um, so that's kind of it for my piece. So thanks everyone for joining us and I'll turn it back to Jessica for some questions. Thank you, Travis, and thank you, Marie. Uh, like Travis mentioned, we're now going to answer some questions that have been submitted during today's presentation. As a reminder, you can still submit your questions and you do so through the questions pane, which is that little question mark on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, we are going to do our best to answer as many as we can during this time, uh, but if we don't get to you, we will reach out after today's presentation. So to get us started, um, we had a question regarding just reiterating the important dates, specifically when a project can start and when it must be finished by, if one of you can touch on that. Thanks, Jessica, I'll take that. All projects regarding what, no matter what kind of grant you receive, begins April 1st. And what we mean by that is don't spend any money prior to April 1. If you do, it will not be eligible, and will not be reimbursed or be accountable in the grant. It, depending on what kind of grant you received, whether you received a community and litter, an academic institution grant, a water bottle refilling station grant, or, or um, I'm sorry, for equipment, those all have one, those are all one year projects, which means you begin April 1st of 2024, and the project would deadline March 30th of 2025. If you received a market development grant or a scrap tire grant, those are generally Ohio businesses and, and required a government sponsor. Those are two-year projects. And there are a couple um, other examples of scrap tires that did not go to a, an Ohio business. But if it's a scrap tire grant for like a paving project, those have two years. So those begin also April 1st, 2024. The same rules apply. Don't spend any money prior to that or it won't be eligible. And you have until March 30th, of 2026 to complete your project. Now, as we talked about before, once your project's done, you can close it out anytime, but once it's closed, it's closed. So what I'm saying is you don't have to wait that whole year or that whole two years to close out that project. If you're buying a piece of equipment, you know, if you're buying a water bottle refilling station and you get it done in a month and a half, fill out your paperwork, get it closed out. Let's close it out and get it off the books. And then you're eligible eligible to apply the next grant round. Thanks, Marie. And off of that, we had a question regarding who completes the closeout. Can you touch on that as well? Yes, ma'am. The closeout report should be completed by um, the, the cooperating enterprise, which is the business, because you're the one who did all the work. We know that you know all the specifics, you've purchased the equipment, so it should be done by you. If you're an Ohio business, there is a form that you need to fill out that has the government sponsor fill out as well. So you'll need to include that in the closeout report. Thank you. And um, someone asked if they close out early, will their funds be issued early as well? You Once you turn in your closeout report, we review it. We do a compliance check if necessary, and we make sure that everything's done and completed properly, then we do we issue the final payment, that payment at the end. If you got money in the beginning, say you were one of the ones that received a community and litter grant and you get 50% up front, you get that remaining balance at the end. Now, if you did not spend the entire grant amount, you will not be paid for you know some work that wasn't done, let's say. If you only ended up spending $45,000, you're only gonna get up to that even if you were awarded 50,000. So sometimes it's a question for a lot of people because they're looking for, you know, 25 up front and 25 at the end, and they didn't get that 25,000 at the end because they didn't spend all of it. They only spent 20,000 of it. Thank you, Marie. Um, okay, we had a couple people that did not see um, the option to fill out a closeout report in their OEPA resource hub. Um, Travis, maybe can you talk about how they should go about reaching out to someone if they're not seeing that, or does that not appear until after their grant's been issued? How does that work? Yeah, so for all those folks, I want to give you a gold star because you're already in there checking it out. Um, so super exciting, but um, if you're not seeing it yet, don't worry. Um, just kind of just alluded to it is we haven't kicked off the grant program yet. Um, so that will not populate until after the grant cycle is actually officially open. So it's not until after April 1st, because basically you can't close out until the, the cycle has been launched. Um, 
So you guys are just in there a little bit early, but you should be able to have access to it after the portal opens. Um, but you won't need to go in there or do anything until you're ready to close out. So until after you've done implementing your project. So um, and kind of like Maria alluded to earlier, if you guys hit the ground running and get your project knocked out the first week of April, um, you could close out middle of April and have everything done. Um, close out, get your money if everything's done and complete. Um, but there is no rush. Basically, the sooner you get your project done, the sooner you're closed out, the sooner you get any remaining funds. But you do have the entire year or two years to do it. So take your time and um, and take what you need. But um, I guess to summarize that, for those who are looking for it, you will not see it yet because the cycle has not started for 2024. Travis. Um, and probably similarly so, um, someone would like to know when our press release announcement for awarded grantees will come out. Will that be April 1 as well? Great question. Um, I'm sorry we didn't talk about that in the presentation. I did make a note of that. Um, we do, once we award everybody and let everybody know, we do work with our um, comms area, which is our communication department, and they put together the um, the press release and once they get that together and get all that information gathered they send it back to us and send us a link and we will send you an email to let you know that hey this has been posted i know a lot of people like to get that share it with their board share it with their community and generally it takes a little while last year they got out a little late we hope they don't go out that late this year we're hoping for um maybe mid-may the end of may get them all out and get them updated but i will send out an email with the link so you know once they're posted where you can go find them. Thanks, Marie. Uh, we had a couple questions regarding water bottle refilling stations, um, specifically if they need to sub submit, excuse me, invoices for any plumbing, electric, construction, or other miscellaneous expenses. Um, I'll yeah, let, yeah, I would say I'll let Travis answer that one. Yeah, so um, this is a little, special for a water bottle grant so kind of keep that in mind since that was what this asked for um so for water bottle grants you your projects have no match and that project just covers the um the expenses of the equipment so it doesn't um cover any insult or anything like that that is handled by the grantee so um the answer for that is no please don't include all that and then to kind of make this answer fit for everybody when you close out the type of invoices things like that we are only looking for invoices receipts proof of payments for stuff that covers your grant and the match portion so for water bottles um we're only looking for stuff that covers the price for the equipment because that's the part you have no match you don't need to include in the other expenses we just need to justify um whatever funds for that for like the other projects if it's something that you're getting dollar amount credit for either on the grant or match side, we will need to see some sort of invoice proof of payment. Um, let's say if it is like a market development grant, for example, um, your, the grant that you got from us is a piece of equipment that's part of maybe a multi-million dollar project that you're doing, and we're just kind of helping out on one piece of equipment for that. We only need to see the invoices and receipts for that um piece of equipment that the grant was part of we do not need to see a bunch of receipts and invoices for the entirety of your project like i say if you're buying a crusher we don't need to see invoices for the bailer and all these other things that are not part of the grant um so really when you're closing out we just want to see that justification those invoices for things that are specific to what the grant is covering and which might not be the whole the whole project but might just be a part of it um so i want to kind of re say that one more time because i know i said a lot of things so for a water bottle refilling station grants, um, insulation, all that stuff, you can include it, but it's not a requirement. We're really just looking at the proof of payments for the equipment piece, because that's what the grant is for. Thanks, Travis. All right, for our grantees that will be receiving uh, funding up front, when can they expect that? And how will that payment come? Is it going to be a check? Who will the check be sent to, et cetera? That's a great question. Um, we start processing the payment once you sign your grant agreement. Now you have until March 31st to get those grant agreements signed and get them in here. And then we start processing the payments. Generally it takes, we like to tell people two to three weeks before you receive the payment. And the way you receive the payment is the way you're set up with the state of Ohio. So if you're set up with an electronic transfer fund, meaning you gave them your um, account 
for your bank information, it will be sent electronically. If you did not, you will get receive a paper check. And as we all know, you know, the mail's a little bit slower, so it takes a little bit longer that way. But if that's how if that's the option that you chose, then you will receive them one of the one or the other way. I will also um, like to say that if you have, say you were you received money for a community and litter grant and you had ten thousand dollars payment coming, and then you had a, another check, you had additional funding coming from another part of the agency, that check may not come and say, hey, this is for $10,000. It might be for $20,000. If those things were done on the same day, those monies are combined together and you might receive a, a, pay, a payment that's a little bit higher than you were expecting because it was for two different things. So just make sure when you receive the payment, that you know what it's for. If you don't, reach out to us and we'll help you. If you didn't get it and it's been a month, call us and let us know and we'll check and verify. That's why it's very important to make sure that the information with the Ohio Shared Services, the payment information that you have provided is correct. Make sure it's up to date. There was an earlier email sent out when you when you got the a grant award that said congratulations and it also had on there that information to make sure that the information you provided to us in the application is the information they have on record thank you marie we had a couple questions come in regarding a portion of the grant manual that states um, a requirement for a separate account can you talk a little bit about what that requirement is Yes, ma'am. That we don't require you to have a separate account. What we ask you to do is to keep that money separate from any other monies that you have coming in and out. And the reason for that is there's a couple reasons. One, we want to make sure that it's easier if you set it aside and put it in a certain account, something that you you make it or your organization makes it. So you know only things that are eligible for the grant are coming in and out of that of that account. For you know, for other words, you know, if you bought two pieces of equipment, one was for the grant and one was not for the grant, just take it out of the grant one, the ones that were eligible under the grant. And that helps you keep better track of it. Again, we don't ask you to call it a 520 or a 530 account. We just ask you to keep it separate. We don't want you using it for payroll or other things and then you have to go back and use it for something else. That's prohibited in the grant program. And what we ask you to do is keep it separate from other funding. Thank you. Um, we had a couple questions regarding um, the possibility of announcing their award before our official press release. Is that okay? That's absolutely okay. As long as you've, this grant agreement has been signed by both the applicant and the Ohio EPA, you're good to go ahead and announce that. Thank you. Um, let's see, there's a few questions again regarding water bottle refilling stations, um, specifically in regards to the closeout. Um, they cannot close out until the stations are installed. Is that correct? That is correct. And this will be true for all projects. So um, just because you've ordered from a supplier and you may have paid for them, that's still too early to close out. Um, what we're kind of looking at for closeout is we want to make sure that your the items have been delivered, that you've installed it. Um, we've run into things in the past where someone said like, oh, I ordered it, it's on its way. Then they get an email from the supplier that it's actually back ordered or it actually gets delivered damaged and they can't install it. Like lots of stuff can happen, not saying it will, but we really are won't do not want to release the funds until your project is actually um, the equipment where maybe has been delivered. Um, same thing if you're running some sort of event, you want to make sure the event has happened, um, has occurred, that there's not any sort of changes. Sometimes um, costs can go up or down. So specifically for water bottles, we um, order the equipment, get it installed, um, then process for the closeout. And that's why we like to see those photos. Include a photo or two of um, the station in on the um, locker room, hallway, wherever it may be. Um, but yes, please wait until the equipment has actually been installed. And we Thank have photos, Sorry, any pictures, any, if you want to make a little video, if you have a, just say, for example, if you have a water bottle refilling station and you've got some people using it, you know, send us a video. We love to highlight you in our um, social media. We like to do tweets and, you know, um, other things. We use other, uh, other, 
platforms and we'd love to highlight you so please anytime you can have the opportunity to make that stuff and show it to us send it to us and we'll get it out there absolutely um, and off of the comment regarding making sure that the grant agreement has been signed by both parties how would a grantee go about verifying that it has been signed well, it would have been signed by your authorizing official. That's who you told us had signature, signatory um, approval with your organization or your school district or whomever. They would have received a copy of that signed grant agreement because it was done electronically. They signed it, then the EPA signed it, and then they got it back with um, you know, a copy of the executed agreement. But if you don't have it and you'd like to have it, just reach out to me, tell me your organization, and I'll be happy to send you a copy of it. Thank you. All right, and then there were several questions about potential price increases um, for equipment or materials since the original quotes. Um, how do they go about getting into contact with our group? Um, is it possible that the grant amount will cover an increase or will they have to cover it? Can you just touch a little more on that? Yeah, no, I can. So for that, um, unfortunately, the easy answer is no. So whenever, let's say you have been authorized for $60,000, um, we're basically locked into what you applied for. So if you came and asked us for $60,000, it's going up to 65, but the 65, unfortunately that difference in the increase would have to be covered by your organization. We, um, we're unable to increase funds um, after, um, basically after it's been awarded and what we do award is based on what was applied for in the application. Um, so the quick easy answer is no, we can't give you more funds, but let's say you did come in and ask for a project and you want, let's say you're doing a litter cleanup project and you wanted to get $10,000 for grabbers, $10,000 for a bags and $10,000 for like the disposal of the waste materials you pick out from your, Letter cleanup. Um, if your, let's say your grabbers actually end up being cheaper, they only end up being $8,000, but your disposal fees end up being higher, end up being $12,000. That is something then we can work with you, work with you that you can maybe change those percentages of what you are budgeting your dollars towards. So now it's not you didn't get more money from us, but that kind of budget breakdown that you had submitted to us. Um, we might be able to tweak that or make some adjustments there to have you maybe um, reallocate funds, put more more money towards an item that end up maybe costing more in that meantime. Um, so for any of those kind of questions or concerns to kind of um, highlight uh, Marie's second poll, please, please reach out to us. Um, this is grant dollars. We have to be good stewards of state money, taxpayer money, which means you have to get permission first. This is not something where it's better to get for, um, ask for forgiveness later. That will not work out well for you or your project. A lot of times we'll have to turn stuff down. If you do need to make adjustments, if you do need to do stuff, please reach out to us as soon as you can. We love to have a talk with you, work stuff out. It's so much easier for us to try to be accommodating or work with you before something happens than after something happens. Um, so if you do know something's going to increase on you or you're trying to figure out how to make stuff work, please reach out to us. We'd be happy to jump on a call and try to figure out what can be done um, within our grant terms of what we can do. But please do not just do something and then think that we can just make it magically work or just tell us at the closeout and say, well, I did it six months ago. That um, that's, might make a lot of heartburn. So please, 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 please reach out to us before anything happens. Thanks, Travis. And a question came in off of your answer. Um, are grantees able to reduce the quantity of items stated in the budget uh, if there is a price increase so that they can stay within their allotted monetary values? Um, yes, and that is something that we have allowed historically in the past. I can't give you like a blanket, yes, that's okay here, um, but that's something that would be great for you to reach out to us and it could be something as a simple call of, hey, we wanted to buy 12, price increase, we only can afford 10, will that work? And we can have some discussions. Might need to like so have a signed piece of paperwork to just uh, for that modification, but that is something that we have done 
um, that would be possible. So just, like I said, reach out to us and um, we'll talk and figure something out. Thank you, Travis. Um, it looks like the rate at which questions are coming in is definitely slowing down. So we'll give about another minute or two for people to submit any last minute questions. Um, in the meantime, um, let's see if I've missed any. Um, if somebody has filled out the application, how does um, the other organization go about accessing the closeout if they were not the ones to fill out the grant application? Um, so that is something that you are not able to do on our end. That is something um, that we at EPA have to assign the account to somebody else. Um, so if you definitely know it's um, not somebody, shoot me a Marine email and just say what, what grant you are, who you represent, and who they need to be. Um, if that person is not in our system, we will have to make them register for an account like I went over earlier. Um, but once they have an account, it just takes us a couple of minutes and we can um, reassign it to them and then they'll have access to that. So that's not something you can do. We have to do that for you. Um, so just reach out, but it's a pretty quick and easy change. Great, thank you. Um, and if there has been a change to a grant timeline included in the application, but the project will still be completed um, during the applicable project dates, do they need to let you know or is that okay? Um, so for timelines, sometimes it's okay. I hate my answer always depends, but if it's going to be something like, hey, we are going to do our tire embassy event in July, we're now doing it in August, that's fine. You don't need to really tell us. That's only, you, you definitely, if you want to let us know, we are never going to be upset or um, turn you down if you're just giving us updates. If you ever just want to like shoot us an email, have a call, we, we're never going to turn that down. Um, but if it's something super minor like that, like we're, we said we we're going to do it on August 15th. We're now doing it on August 20th. Little things like that, you don't need to do it for us. But if it is something you think that, okay, we're not going to do it in November. We're now going to do it in um, middle of March, where it's going to push it like right towards the end of the grant cycle. And if something happens and then we're outside the grant cycle, that's definitely something you should talk to us about because then it could jeopardize if you actually are in the cycle, um, if you can actually get it done. Um, so, most likely it's something that you think that could jeopardize the project or it's going to throw stuff off or if you just want to cover all your bases just reach out to us shoot us an email even if it's just an update email of hey we'll let you know we said we're going to do it this we're doing that let us know if we need anything and we can definitely let you know um, um yeah. yeah great a lot of these i know are very specific cases so thanks for your generalized answers i'm sure it's much appreciated um, like I mentioned earlier, if we did not get to your question during the question answer portion, we will reach out to you directly. I know some of you asked very specific questions related to your project. Um, either Travis, um, sorry, Travis, Marie, or Carrie will reach out to you after the presentation today with some follow up to get you whatever information you might need. Uh, if you have any issues as you go throughout your your grant process, uh, feel free to reach out to anybody on our team. That contact slide is included in the slide deck. Um, specifically, Marie is your grant contact, so she would be best to reach out to. Uh, we will go ahead and move on from Q&A for now, but again, please reach out if you have any questions after today. And I just want to thank Marie and Travis again for their great presentation and thank you everyone for attending today. Congratulations on your grant award and we cannot wait to see the results. Uh, before we end today, I did want to briefly touch on our Encouraging Environmental Excellence Award program. Some of your grant projects may be relevant to getting you recognition, so I did want to highlight this. Uh, there are three different branches of the program and each one aims to highlight a different sector. The first one, our E3, recognizes Ohio businesses, organizations, nonprofits, and more. Our E3C program recognizes Ohio communities and our E4 program recognizes Ohio K through 12 public and private schools. So again, depending on what your grant project is, it may be applicable into getting you points within this application. If you have specific questions related to the program, feel free to check out the link at the bottom of the screen there, or you can reach out to anyone on our team as well. 
the application deadline for our 2024 award cycle um, is April 30th. So applications are currently being accepted. And again, more information is available at that link. Again, I just want to reiterate that if there are any questions after today's presentation, please reach out. Um, otherwise, I'd like to thank you all again for attending, and we look forward to seeing the results of your project. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.